those of you who saw my recent review of the Suntu Race and Race S know that their strength was GPS tracking, but their weakness was heart rate tracking. And Suntu all but admitted to me that this was important for them to improve. And that promises to be the case now with the Suntu Race 2, Suntu's latest flagship racing watch. And I'm very excited to test it out. And unfortunately, only limited test samples were available, so I got it rather late, but it should be arriving today. So I'll be doing an initial test of the Suntu Race 2 and sharing all the details with you. And I'm mostly gonna be focusing on heart rate tracking performance and GPS tracking to see if in an initial test, the Suntu Race 2 appears to be better in heart rate tracking and maybe even GPS tracking than the Suntu Race and Race S. However, let's first discuss some of the important specifications of this new watch from Suntu to and we'll be doing that over in my studio. Oh, and I shouldn't forget to mention, I'm also gonna get my brain scanned with an MRI in this video, but more on that later. As I said, let's get to the studio. Okay, welcome to the studio. I think that Suntu's new Race 2 is positioned basically as an ultimate performance GPS watch for both training and racing. You can think of it, I think, as the original race, but slimmer, lighter, with a bigger screen, a redesigned optical heart rate sensor, and a faster processor that should make the interface feel a bit snappier and also leave some room for future updates. The Suntu Race 2 also keeps the brand's strong navigation and outdoor toolkit, including free offline maps, which is good since we know from my previous testing that Suntu watches did well when it comes to GPS tracking and maps and everything with that is very important. Now the big changes compared to the race one start with the display and the case. The race two now moves to a larger 1.5 inch AMOLED panel at 466 by 466 pixels set inside a 49 millimeter case that is about 12 and a half millimeters thick larger than the race as still. Despite the larger screen, the watch is lighter than the race because now Suntu mixes metal with more composite materials in the case itself. The stainless steel version weighs about 76 grams, while the titanium model comes in at roughly 65 grams. Now the screen remains sapphire and water resistance stays at 100 meters. You will get the familiar digital crown with the two buttons from the race family. Suntu did rework the charging, which is good because before it always wobbled a bit on the charger and you could have some problem really positioning it well. The new snap-in cable latches more securely to the watch in the older puck, which should make it easier to keep the watch charging and not accidentally not have it charging for the whole time. Now here comes the part that I think is one of the most important things, that is that the back of the watch has been completely redesigned to house what Suntu claims is the most accurate optical heart rate hardware to date. That's at least the company's claim, but that's just a claim. I'll be testing that independently against the chest strap across runs, cycling and strength training. Hi there, Rob from the future here. So I have good news and bad news and the bad news is actually pretty bad. The package never arrived. I didn't get a tracking link from Suntu, so I have no idea when it will arrive exactly. They told me today, but it didn't, so I'm not able to do any testing today. And since I have no idea when it will actually arrive, I'm still gonna put out the video because the good news is I did get a lot of information from Suntu and I went through all the specifications and I also went back to the plots I made for my testing of the Suntu Race and Race S so I can clearly show you where I think Suntu should improve and where Suntu also claims they have improved. And those things overlap pretty well, so that's good news. But back to past Rob, who's still blissfully ignorant and thinks he's gonna receive a cool new watch today. If like Suntu claims indeed the new sensor reduces cadence lock during running and lag during surges, that would be a meaningful upgrade over the original race which wasn't great for heart rate tracking. You can see right here for instance in red how the race performed in terms of heart rate tracking for different exercises compared to the competition. So the different exercises are along the horizontal axis where each dot is a different device and the original race is indicated in red. Basically, the higher the dot in each of these boxes, the better the performance of a device. And as you can see, compared to the competition, there's a lot of room for improvement in the Suntu race, with many or even most watches doing better, especially for running. And right here, we actually see the same for the Suntu race as the smaller brother of the race. 
So I'm actually really hopeful with the release of this new Suntu Race 2 that things will be a lot better and that they're much more competitive. I don't think they'll be as good as, for instance, the Apple Watch or the Pixel Watch, but these are also in a different category of devices with a much poorer battery life and just more lifestyle watches and less so dedicated sports watches. Now the electronics inside the race 2 should also be faster now, which would hopefully give smooth map panning and zooming, less UI hesitation when starting workouts, and also more responsive metrics on hard workouts. But let's see how that goes. Now the battery claims varied slightly across the documents I got, so I'll give a range and then of course test it actually in real life. For training in the most accurate dual band all systems GNSS mode, the race 2 is quoted at up to 55 hours, which is really good. In single band up to 65 hours and power saving tracking mode stretch that to around 200 hours. In daily smartwatch use, some press materials say up to 18 days, while in other press release also said 12 days when also doing some training. Now the real number will of course depend a lot on how much you use it also for training. Either way, for a bright AMOLED watch, those are pretty competitive figures compared to, for instance, devices from Coros and Garmin, but we'll have to see how it works in real life. On the software side, the Race 2 supports over 115 sports modes with 22 new options across trail running, cycling, swimming, skiing, triathlon, and much more. It retains Suntu's outdoor navigation tool, so as I said, free offline maps with up to 32 gigabytes of storage, dual band GPS with support for all major constellations, a barometer with fused altitude, breadcrumb trail, waypoints and route guidance, and as we expected, a compass, weather alerts, plus sunrise and sunset times. Now for training guidance, you'll get the evolving Suntu coach, pacing, fueling tools, recovery time and load metrics alongside what many people seem to really appreciate, which is Suntu's zone sense approach to heart rate zones. Now at this time, Suntu is actually also releasing the Suntu Wing 2, which is this open ear bone conductance headphone. When paired to the watch, it can deliver real time voice feedbacks for pace, heart rate and other prompts without the need for looking at your wrist. Now, I assume this is also true for any other Bluetooth headphone that you connect, but I couldn't confirm that for now. The Race 2 still works with soon to heart rate bells, but also with other third party sensors. Now, what if we compare the Race 2 directly to Suntu's other performance models? Well, versus the original race, the differences are pretty straightforward, I would say. The Race 2 has a bigger 1.5 inch display versus 1.43 inches. A thinner body at 12.5 millimeters versus 33.3 for the original and a lower weight in both the steel and titanium versions. The processor and memory are upgraded, the charger is redesigned and the optical heart rate hardware is new. Battery claims are similar on paper but we'll have to see with real use. Now versus the race as the split is a bit bigger. The race 2 is larger but also tougher with a 49mm case sapphire lens and 100m water resistance compared to the race S which has a 45mm case gorilla glass and only 50 meters of water resistance. The race S's screen has the same resolution though but it's smaller at 1.32 inch. Now battery life is where the race 2 definitely does better than the race S up to 55 hours in dual band, as we mentioned before, compared to about 30 hours on the race S and up to 65 on single band on the race two versus 40 on the race S and up to 200 hours in power saving for the race two, whereas that's only 120 for the race S. Now, both devices still have offline maps and dual frequency GPS, but the larger display on the race two gives you a more usable map real estate, but it really depends. It is quite large on the wrist, I suspect. The trade-off between the race two and race S is weight. The race S is the lightest option, and if you prioritize minimal wrist sizes, that's a bit better as well. My balance take, based on all the information I have now, on paper, the big wins for me are the redesigned heart rate sensor, the bigger display in a thinner and lighter body, Battery life is still competitive as well compared to other AMOLED watches and it supports dual band all system GPS which is important as well. One of the trade-offs I guess Suntu had to make is to use more composite materials in the case as well to reduce weight which might make it feel less premium than a full metal build but I'll have to wait until I actually have it in my hands. But of course you still get sapphire glass and 100 meters water resistance so that's pretty good. Now, if you already own the original race the upgrade case hinges on two questions I'll answer in my testing. 
does the new optical heart rate sensor generally do a lot better and is it very close to a chest strap and does the UI and map performance feel a lot better? And do you notice actually that faster processor every day? Now, if you're choosing between the Race 2 and the Race S because you just want a soon to watch, then it's a bit harder. The Race 2 is probably better overall, but it's bigger and heavier. And for many women, it'll probably be too big, but I'm excited to hold it in my hands in a few hours or later today, at least. In terms of price, this watch ends up somewhere in the middle of all sort of mid to premium range sports watches. The Race 2 stainless steel is 499 euros and I assume similar in dollars. And the titanium model is 599 euros and it should be available from today. Now that's the overview of all of the features that I'm aware of and I'm super excited to test it. And now it's time to get my brain scanned. Now, if you're wondering why, let me quickly summarize it. I'm actually a scientist specializing in biological data analysis and as sort of a side project about seven years ago, together with a bunch of other scientists, we started a few NS1 projects and I'm one of the main participants and I've been getting weekly brain MRIs ever since then with maybe a few gaps, for instance, due to COVID. So since 2018, I think I've gotten my brain scanned somewhere between 250 and 300 times with an MRI. Now our goal is to find out as sort of a case study, how does this link to all the events in my life? So I fill out a lot of questionnaires about what's subjectively happening to me, what my mood is, what's happening in my surroundings. But I also had, I think about 250 microbiome samples or so. So we're also linking the brain to the gut, so the bacteria in my gut. And finally, I do a lot of sleep tracking, which is why I have access to all of these devices to test watches against. I work with a sleep lab at the Donders Institute in the Netherlands, and also now with the University of Salzburg to do this kind of sleep tracking. And I'm pretty excited to share those results when they come out. We're still writing up some papers now, but I'll talk about that more once the papers are actually out. But I think 250 to 300 functional and structural brain MRIs is probably a record, so. I've become the most measured person in human history, becoming the most measured person in history. The most measured person in human history. Brian Johnson, eat your heart out, and I'm actually thinking of submitting it to the Guinness Book of World Records, but let's see if I have the time to do that in the end. It would be pretty cool, but I have to leave now because my session is always at 8.15 in the morning, so let's cycle there. So I'm at work right now and I've been waiting for the race two to arrive the entire day and I was told it should arrive today but unfortunately it hasn't. I don't have a tracking link so I have no idea what's going on. There are sometimes some issues with it being delivered at my workplace but that means that I cannot do any testing of the race two before the actual release. And for now, I decided to quickly release this video that describes what it is and what my hopes for the device are. Then over the next day or two, I'll do a bunch of testing and then quickly make a video that's more comprehensive. I won't repeat all the specs, that's done for now. So I wanted to get that out. So if you're interested in this device, you would anyway have that information already. And then I'll do an initial test over the next day or two. Also get that video out as quick as possible. So if you wanna see that, don't forget to subscribe. If you have any thoughts about this new watch from Sunto, please like and comment and also check out some of the other reviews because they received it already a while before I did. Unfortunately, I wasn't on the priority list for Sunto in this release, but hopefully I'll be on that for the next release. So check out people like Chase the Summit, Desfit, DC Rainmaker, and they will already have a bunch of testing for you. But don't worry, as I said, my own testing will also be there soon. So I'll see you in one to three days with the race two testing video. If you do decide you already want to get the race to an eight sleep pod a whoop strap another device or anything at all on amazon for that matter even something as small as toilet paper and you want to support this channel and in many cases get the best discount possible there are different affiliate links in the description below now given that you watched this whole video on the race to check out this video on the race and race s or this video on the eight sleep pod